Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can calibrate both a polyumod material model and a polyumod failure model to some experimental data. So as you see in this example, this is stress strain data, intention, both cyclic data and monotonic data. And uh, the goal here is to come up with a material model that can match all of this data, including failure of the material once it reaches these final strain values over here. So this is an assignment that requires two steps. So the first step is to calibrate the material model. And once I have a good material model, I will activate and calibrate the failure model. So I'm going to start by uh, working with the, the material model. And uh, I'm going to select the material model. In this case, I'm going to use the PolyUMOD TNV model that's available here. And this is a polyurethane type material. So I'm going to have three networks with these default settings. But I am going to activate failure here. I'm going to have a strain-based failure option active here. And then this list of parameters become relatively long. So I'm going to scroll this up. And um, towards the end of this uh, portion here is where the failure parameters are listed. I do not want to search for them yet. So I'm going to turn these off. I'm also going to deactivate failure by setting the failure strain to be very, very large. So failure will not occur. Uh, but it's still a, a part of the model. So here's the material model that I want to calibrate now. Um, I'm going to save this file so I can uh, come back to it later if I want to. So I'm going to call this calibration TNV uh, 1. So step 1 is just to calibrate the material model. The next thing I will do here is uh, in the definition of these two uh, load cases. I'm going to tell M calibration that these were done to failure. Uh, there is one setting here that's useful for that. Let's go into here. The load case is run to failure. If I select this checkbox, it's good for reporting. It adds all it does is adds a little marker at the end of the curve to indicate that this was indeed run to failure. So I'm activating that here. We see both of now indicated that they're done to failure. And I, I recommend you use this in reports, etc. If if you have data that's done to failure. The next thing I will do uh, is, is to try to just calibrate this model now. Uh, here are all the default guesses. And I'm just going to click Run once, and we'll see if this is a good set of parameters. We'll see that the initial parameters are, are reasonably good, but the error is very large. We need to run the, this calibration now. So I will. Um, run the calibration for a little bit, and then we'll uh, take a look at how we calibrate the failure model. So I is going to use uh, the extensive automatic method. I want to save my calibration results automatically during the calibration. And I'm just going to let this run for a little bit. OK, so I have uh, let the simulation calibration run for a little bit now. and. Uh, uh, the predictions look pretty good. If I let it run a little longer, the predictions probably will look even better. But the error is already down to about 2% here. So this is uh, now the time to switch on to calibrating the failure model. So we have a good material model. And we're going to try to calibrate the failure model. So to do that, I'm going to turn off all the calibrations of the material parameters. I will lock the stress strain predictions to this particular model. Um, and then. Once we've done that, we're going to start calibrating the failure parameters. So as I mentioned earlier, it's a two-step procedure. I do the material model first, and then we go to the failure model. And that's listed down to the bottom here. Um, so here's the, the parameters to describe the failure predictions of the polyumod TNV model. We have a failure strain at slow strain rates and a failure strain at fast strain rates. And then we have uh, parameters to control how the strain rate changes between those values. So to understand a little bit more what these parameters mean, we can look at the polyumod manuals. So if I click on this icon here, I get this window that uh, shows us a little bit what's going on. Let's try again. OK. And um, here is the particular graph that I wanted to show. So if you look at this, you'll see that this is a failure strain at high strain rate. It's a failure strain at low strain rate. And this FA and FB are transition strain rates that the strain rate switches between. So if I minimize that window, so this, these uh, are the strain rates um, uh, that, that control that. So we can look at the data here. 
And I can turn off these uh, load cases because we're only going to work on the failure position here now, the failure uh, onset of failure. So we have two strain rates listed here. I'm going to make this the low strain rate, which is then 0 0.001 approximately, and this I'm going to make 0 0.1. Um, they don't have to be this, but this is a good starting point for what uh, we're looking for. And I got these values from the values of the experimental data. Then the next thing is to come up with a guess for the failure strains. And these are true strain values. So I plot true strain, true stress here. See, they're around one of true strains. So I'm going to make this 0 0.5 and 0 0.5, for example. And um, that is a good starting point, I would think. The, the other parameter control, controlling this is fail D strain. I'll go, come back to that in a minute. First, now I'm going to run once, and we'll see what happens when I run this. We'll see that the stress strain prediction goes up to about 0 0.5 true strain, because that's what we set here, and then the strain, the stress starts to drop. We started to get damage and accumulation, damage and failure over here. So this is what we want it to be like. We want to shift it out, though, and we want it to drop faster in order to match the, the fail, experimental failure points here. So fail strain, fail D strain is how much strain it takes from the onset of damage to the final failure. So this is 0.2 here. I'm going to make it 0 0.02, much smaller. So we do that. We see it's going to drop much quicker. All I need to do now is move this out here. Um, I could just run calibration from this point, and it will move this out. But the problem with that is that if you get a failure strain that's too large, then, then it won't trigger failure. So you, it's hard for the software to distinguish between uh, values of fail strain when they are too large. So to solve that and, and facilitate this calibration, I'm going to activate another feature that's designed to help you with this. So I'm going to open this load case here. I'm going to go to the miscellaneous tab. I'm going to set failure time from data. I'm going to click on this button. And it tells you that this is the experimental failure strain. And I'm going to repeat that for the other load case, double clicking it on it, miscellaneous, set failure time. When I do that, what M calibration does, it adds additional uh, uh, data, basically adds data for what happens after the final point. And we needed that here because the experimental file was truncated at the max point. So by doing that, we get a curve that, that looks like this. And we can use this now from either side of the failure location here in order to match the data better. So I'm going to try to calibrate this model now from this point using these particular values. We can try it first by increasing these a little bit to see if it looks better. 0 0.7, 0 0.7. It should shift these out a little bit. So that looks pretty good, right? You just need to figure out what these particular values should be. And there are two of them in this case to search for. So I'm going to say run calibration. I'm going to use the extensive automatic method that will save the calibration as we move along. And I'll then just try to run this here. So it's, it's starting to manipulate these a little bit. And um, by using the automatic method, um, it, it may not be the fastest in this case. Maybe a, a Nelder Mead simplex approach would have been even faster, but this will do the trick. You'll see that they're starting to move further out. It's starting to change these two parameters in order to match the data a little bit better. And we're just going to let it sit here for a little bit longer, and we'll see if we can match the data even more than it's matched right now. So I stopped it after about one minute, uh, and it took about 30 attempts. And we see that the predictions are now starting to look really good. The ranking between the two strain rates is OK. It onsets failure exactly where we want it to. Um, I'm going to save this calibration. So the predictions look really good at this point. The next step now that we have a calibrated failure model is to remove this additional extra data that was used during the failure calibration. So I'll double click on the first load case, go to miscellaneous. And now it's going to highlight all of this time here. I'm going to save this. And I'm going to repeat that for the second. Uh, load case. I'm going to remove this failure time uh, feature that we used during the calibration. If I run it one more time now, we'll see that we starting to see the drop here, and then the, the simulation ends at the final strain that was used there. But that's exactly what we want. Here's our material model, and it looks like it matches the data really well. If we want to, we could activate the other material 
uh, load cases here as well, and used to verify that our material model now matches the stress strain predictions, the cyclic response, and the failure response at the same time. Uh, before we export this model and start using it in an example, what I want to do is I want to turn on uh, element deletion when we export it in the material model level. So what that means is I go to set material model, I go to polyumod variables under this tab, I'm sorry, material info and properties. And I say activate element deletion flag. So I'm going to say that to yes. And now it's important that I only click on update info and not OK. If I say OK, it will reset the parameters based on the data. I don't want that. I just want to update this particular flag here. We could have done that earlier, uh, but I want to do it here at this point. So I save this. And this is our uh, calibration of the material model and the failure model. I am going to export this to an Abacus IMP file. I'm going to export it like this. I'm going to call it this CalTNV1, and I'm going to save it here. And if we look at this file, we'll see what we find. Uh, this is the file that we just created. It has a star material and some kind of material name. And then it has density, material constants. Here they are the constants. And then they have depth for delete four, and then some names of the uh, state variables. Uh, so that's the, ma the material file that we're working with. I want to demonstrate now how we can use this in the real finite element simulation. So I have a test case, a tension of a notch specimen. I'm going to open this file with a, my text editor. I'm going to search for solid section, which is here. And see that the material in this case is, is named PE. I have it in already a temporary material here that I'm going to get rid of and replace with the new material that we just calibrated. So here is the space I want to insert the new material. So I go back here, I select all, Control C to copy, I paste it in here. And we know this needs to be called material name PE. Here are these. I'm going to get rid of the empty lines here. And this is now our material definition for this viscoplastic material model with failure and strain rate dependence of failure. And uh, I can now run this. I'm going to see if I can run it uh, as we're working on this here. So to run it, I'm going to open one of my files here. I'm going to go to this one is called calibration tension notched X TNV. And I press enter. I believe Abacus should now start running this simulation, this test case for us. And uh, it takes a little bit to check out the license and all of this and that. Uh, but it's, it's working on uh, starting. It takes a while to start. I'll just wait here and see how this progresses. All right, so the, the analysis is finished now. Let's take a look and see what the results look like. It's going to open this file. This will call TNV. I'm just doing it from a command line window here. This should open Abacus CAE, and we can take a look at what happened in this particular test case that, that we just ran. All right, so here's our simulation. It's actually an axisymmetric simulation, but I'm visualizing it with a swept mesh so we can see a little better what's going on, perhaps. Uh, it's going to rotate this a little bit here. We can zoom in a little bit. If we pull it out, um, we can uh, plot this as a function of time and see what happens. As expected, we have a, in this case, we have a cylinder with a deep notch in it, and we're pulling it in tension. So we're going to have very high stresses and strains at the root of the notch. And once the stresses and strain reaches a certain value, it will int uh, introduce failure. So we can plot here on the contour. I'm going to plot. A risk factor, for example, that shows you how close we are to failure. We're 30% to failure in the red region here. And then up to 60, 70, 80, 90. And there it starts to fail. The material just rips apart. And that's what we see. So this is an example where we have a viscoelastic, viscoplastic material model. We have uh, a failure condition that triggers element deletion in this particular case. We can plot the force displacement if we felt like it. Or we can have this as a more interesting FE simulation. But that's really how you would run a simulation like this and how you would calibrate the polyumod version of the TNV model with failure for this type of analysis. 
you have any questions, write them in the comments below.